Hi students, lesson 62 has a couple of different topics, but they all relate to each other. Basically, we're going to be talking about square roots and I guess I would say evaluating using plus or minus. That, I don't even know what that means. So if that sounds confusing to you, then I'm right with you. But we're going to start with a really simple idea. We're going to just remind ourselves what square roots are all about. Remember that a square root is a number that if you multiply it by itself, you'll get the original number back. Does that make sense? So anytime you have, I'll just write this another way, a square root times a square root, you always get the inside number back, okay? That's why I say that two in the house equals one out of the house. Um, this works for positive values of x only. Negative numbers inside the house are a big no-no for us right now, so we're never going to have a negative number out there. But we know that um, multiplying a number inside a square root times itself gives you one out there. So we know simple things like square root of 2 times square root of 2 equals 2. We know that you can make it more complicated as well. You can make the number more complicated, but the idea stays just the same. If I put some weird number inside the house, as long as I multiply it by the very same thing, I get my number back. So that's pretty cool. Now here is an interesting thing. The square root of a number can either be a counting number, what we called an integer in our previous lesson where we talked about that, or depending on what the original number is, it might be an irrational number. And by irrational, we mean it can't be expressed as a fraction. And um, if we think of it in terms of decimals, it's a non-repeating decimal. So, for example, if you plug square root of 18 into your calculator, you will get a big, long chain of numbers. It is a non-repeating decimal number. That's how your calculator will show it to you. And that's how you know that it is irrational. And it's also how we know that in order to express this properly, we're going to have to round to a certain number of digits. And there are some problems in this lesson, digits, not digits. There are some problems in this lesson that just ask you to practice plugging in an irrational number to your calculator, getting out a big long list of digits, and then rounding it properly. Remember the rules are for rounding is that if the digit is 0 to 4, then you stay and if you've got 5 to 9, you round up. Remember, 5 is the critical number where you start rounding up. So you can practice rounding some irrational numbers, some irrational square roots in the um, problems. You'll see you'll have an opportunity to do that. All right, let me slide my paper up. Okay, so that is the first part of Lesson 62. Um, it's just kind of theoretical. A really useful piece of Lesson 62 is um, Example 62.3. And you'll see there's a chart that has information like this. 1 squared equals 1. 2 squared equals 4. 3 squared equals 9. 4 squared equals 16. And it goes on from there. Um, oh, it goes the other way. 
their numbers go across, whatever. You'll see the difference. Those are really good numbers to memorize. Some of you might already know, for example, that 15 squared equals 225. That is great to know. Another one, 12 squared equals 144. Uh, you'll see that chart, like I said, example 62.3. It's on my page 254. Super, super useful. I would put a little post-it note tabby on there or do something so that you have that chart right handy for you. It'll probably be useful in the next few lessons. Um, so here is where that information can be useful. Let's say that the problem, like example 62.4, says, without using a calculator, determine what two consecutive integers square root of 10 lies between. Well, what you can do is you can say, well, let's see, what other square roots do I know that are around there? We know that the square root of 9 equals 3. And we know that the square root of 16 equals 4. Does that make sense so far? So what you know is that the square root of 10 is going to lie somewhere in between 3 and 4. So it's going to be 3 point something. Again, this will help so that when you use your calculator to actually determine the square root of 10, because we can't do it, just um, by using integers, it will be, oh, just a second, you can't see my numbers. Oh, that's so sad. Okay, so not this, we want, we're want. we looking for the square root of 10. We know that the square root of 9 is 3. We know the square root of 16 is 4. 10 lies between 9 and 16, so we know that the square root of 10 will be 3 point something. And that is a great way to make sure that your calculations on the calculator are not going wonky. So, that is why it's really helpful to have a strong memory on some of these even square roots. Let's move on to example 62, or section 62.B. And again, this is about memorization. And what we're going to be looking at is that some of these square roots come up over and over again, and we want to have them quick in our memory. So, for example, Example 62.5 has things like, what is the cube root of 8? Well, we can just memorize that. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. So therefore, the cube root of 8 equals 2. Notice that it has to be positive 2, not negative 2. Um, Here's another one. This was A. Here's B. What is the fourth root of 81? Remember, this tells us four numbers, a number multiplied by itself four times equals 81. Well, mentally, we know that 81 equals 9 times 9. And then we can break this down further to get 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Oh, look, there's a number multiplied by itself four times that equals 81. So the fourth root of 81 equals 3. Um, and now C is a good one, too, because this one says, what is the cube root? of minus 27. Now we start to get nervous because there's a minus sign in our house that makes us a little uncomfortable, but we're looking for a number that multiplied by itself three times will give us minus 27. And if you don't know this right off, you can break this down. 27, well that's 9 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. So if you think about it, there are the three numbers we have to have the minus sign in there because we need to come up with a minus 27. But minus 3 multiplied by itself three times will give us minus 27. So we can say that the cube root of minus 27 equals negative 3. These are good numbers to memorize so that you have this information kind of at the front of your brain. 
as you're doing the problems. Now, all of these examples kind of come together in section 62.C, where we're going to start doing problems like this. Minus 2 squared plus square root of 3. I'm sorry, it doesn't help when I say that out loud, does it? Okay, so we're going to evaluate this. And I'm looking at example 62.6 on page 256, 255. So the first thing we do is we follow our order of operation. I'm writing over here steps. The first one is roots and exponents. So the first thing we're going to do is simplify, I spelled that wrong, first thing we're going to do is simplify our roots and our exponents. So let's start with this one. The rule for dealing with minus signs is that we cover them up if we can get to them unless they're protected by parentheses. In this case, we can cover it up. 2 squared is 4. Then when we uncover it, there's our minus sign again plus, I just bring that down, now there our minus sign is protected, so we're actually multiplying mul minus 3 times minus 3, and that will give us positive 9 plus or minus the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Now we can simplify the next step in our order of operations, of course, would be parentheses. We've dealt with that. The third step would be multiplying or dividing. We don't have any of that. So the fourth step is to add or subtract. So minus 4 plus 9 is 5. 5 plus or minus 2 means that our answers are either 5 minus 2, which is 3, and 5 plus 2, which is 7. So that is our final answer to this problem. So I'm not sure that we're really doing much new, but we are reviewing a lot of our uh, basic operations. Again, this whole work with our minus signs. We're reviewing our order of operations to make sure we're using that properly. And we're also drawing in some memory work to make sure that when we see things like what is the fourth root of 81? We've got those uh, numbers at our fingertips. So this is a good time to do a little bit more memorizing and um, to look at those charts and to refresh some of these facts that you already know. I kind of feel like this lesson we're just taking a breath and recouping and kind of letting our brains catch up with some of the information that's been thrown at us in the past dozen lessons or so. So, good luck.